Hey, what's going on, Ryan here with Intersection Records. We're talking about the Super Bowl this weekend and the history of halftime performers. It's pretty interesting. Got some thoughts on it. I'm not gonna go through every single year, but highlights. Super Bowl started in January, January 15th of 67. Remember when the Super Bowl was in January? Well, it used to be all, all the way up on the 15th. That year, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum Stadium, or Memorial Coliseum, you had a marching band at the University of Arizona in Grambling. Also, Al Hurt, famous trumpet player, played. And really, you're, you're gonna see mostly in the first 30 years, it's, it's marching bands. 1970, we have Doc Severson play, Lionel Hampton, famous vibes player, Car Carol Channing, along with Southern California, Marching band and Al Hurt again, 72. Ella Fitzgerald, Carol Channing, and Al Hurt there for a salute to Louis Armstrong in New Orleans, 73. Michigan uh, marching band with Woody Herman and Andy Williams. It's kind of interesting. You know, really uh, more marching bands through the mid 70s. Uh, Pete Fontaine and Al Hurt play again in New Orleans in 78. More marching bands. George Burns and Mickey Rooney are rolled out in 1987 in the Rose Bowl tribute to Hollywood, I guess, with a marching band again at Grambling State. I'm a little bit under the weather this week. F f flash to 1990, we have Pete Fontaine uh, and Doug Kershaw again with a Nickel State marching band at the Louisiana Superdome. 1991, New Kids on the Block come out. 25 years of the Super Bowl in Tampa Stadium. 1992, Gloria Estefan comes out. More pop stars here, 92. 93, you have Michael Jackson at the Rose Bowl, and that starts pop stars playing on a regular basis. We have country music celebrated, 94, Clint Black, Tanya Tucker, Travis Tritt, the Judds, 95, Patti LaBelle, Petty Pendergrass, Tony Bennett, Arturo Sandoval in the Miami Sound Machine, Diana Ross at Sun Devil Stadium in 96, the Blues Brothers featuring Dan Aykroyd, John Goodman, and Jim Belushi, along with ZZ Top and James Brown at the New Orleans Superdome in 97. That's pretty cool. And um, I think, yeah, uh, 1998, in San Diego, we have Boys the Men, Smokey Robinson, Martha Reeves, The Temptations, Queen Latifah, and the Grambling State Marching Band, of course. 99, Gloria Stefan, Stevie Wonder, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. Remember them? 2000, Phil Collins, Christina Aguilera, uh, Enrique Gonzalez, uh, Iglesias, Tony Braxton there in, uh, in the Georgia Dome when the Rams won the Super Bowl, St. Louis. Uh, 01, NSYNC and Aerosmith. U2 in 2002. And, the, and rock kind of dominates this early millennium. No Doubt and Shania Twain with Sting in 93. 90, excuse me, 03, 04. The famous Justin Timberlake, uh, Janet Jackson, Mal. Uh, wardrobe malfunction with Kid Rock and Jessica Simpson and Nelly. So let's go back to rock because of that malfunction, right? Uh, 05, McCartney. 06, The Rolling Stones in Detroit. 07, Prince in the rain. Remember that? That was incredible. A Dolphin Stadium. 2008, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers was fantastic. Bruce Springsteen in 09 in Tampa. The Who in... 2010 when Patrick Mahomes was in high school. I think he was a freshman. So that's the last time a, a rock band headlined the Super Bowl, 2010 The Who. The next year in 11 we have Black Eyed Peas. The next year we have Madonna in 12. The next year we have Beyonce in 13 with Destiny's Child reunion. And in 14 Bruno Mars headlines but the Red Hot Chili Peppers come out and people were questioning whether the Red Hot Chili Peppers were really playing their instruments. And I think this feeds into this. 
2015, Katy Perry, Coldplay plays in 16, Lady Gaga in 17, Justin Timberlake again in 18, Maroon 5 in 19, Sh uh, Shakira and Jennifer Lopez in 20, and then The Weeknd in 21, the tribute to hip hop and, and at SoFi Stadium, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Eminem, Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, 50 Cent in 2022 in LA, and then Rihanna last year and Usher this year. What is my thoughts? There's no rock. Why? Because I think they want something, one, an, an artist that they can control in the industry. They don't want rock bands because rock bands need to play their instruments. And I don't think they have the time or they want to deal with the weather or they want to deal with the electronics and they want somebody that goes up there and entertains people 50 million people that are watching are from around the world and maybe don't care about tom petty and the heartbreakers um they want something where they could push play and people dance and there's explosions and it's cool and if in my world it's nonsense the, the 2010 was the last time the Who played, right? Is that what you said? That's the last time a real rock band played. For me, that corresponds with the last time I watched the Grammys and took those kind of seriously, when rock bands were still exalted and put in mainstream TV. Um, they, they don't want that anymore. They want somebody that can go out lip sing and dance and, and, and shake their booty. And I, I guess I get that, I hate it. You know, how about Chili Peppers play again as a headliner? How about the Eagles play? How about Pearl Jam plays? How about Elton John or Metallica or the Foo Fighters or Guns N' Roses or Billy Joel or Bon Jovi even? Uh, you know, how, you know, uh, how about Greta Van Fleet or the Struts? Um, you know, or Marcus King or Fish? <laughs> you know, again, they don't. They want to keep it safe. They want to keep it uh, crummy, frankly. Uh, it's not about how, what kind of music it is. It's how you look. It's all about image. Uh, the other night on the Grammys, it's all about that. It's not about quality. We don't care about quality anymore. We just, the industry wants a controllable artist where they have part of the producing and songwriting credits that they can exalt to this elite level that they think is great. And I think it's junky. Anyway, check out my channel. We do shows every day. Peace out. See you.